and uh, we also have other uh, clinics that we offer the high rises, the low rises, and also we had a clinic with uh, Massasoit Community College um, last month. And so we continue to have those clinics and I anticipate that COVID clinic will continue to go uh, on um, because COVID is not, is not living anytime soon. Um, so there may be some uh, adjustment in the law, in the uh, authorization as we move forward, given that we have a new administration in Massachusetts, the governor, new governor, new lieutenant governor, they may have their own uh, regulations. And also there is a new uh, health and um, uh, human service and health secretary, uh, Kate Watch. Uh, yesterday was her first day on the job. I met just met her a while ago. So we anticipating some changes, but uh, we don't know um, exactly when. So okay. we'll yeah. just stay tuned. All right. Um, with respect to the numbers, yes, go ahead. Mr. Fish, did you have a question? No, no, just going along ah. with what you said. Okay, okay. Now we are at 533 deaths um, in this month. This year alone, we've had more than um, 10 deaths total. And most of them are COVID related and people who have not uh, been updated uh, with their um, um, vaccination. And so therefore, uh, even though COVID is not no longer a pandemic, but people continue to suffer and even go through death because of um, uh, not giving um, enough attention to how they can be um, affected by the um, um, virus. Um, so first, I was I must say that today, as of today, we had uh, thirteen uh, new cases, and we are we have a cumulative number of thirty four thousand three hundred and fifteen from the beginning of the um, of COVID. The wastewater, we continue to collect information, um, and uh, it's one of the uh, key uh, lab results that allow us to see uh, where we are with it. So sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. The For this week, we had the um, report that was uh, submitted. We are a little bit under uh, a million copies of mm -hmm. uh of virus per one liter of um, wastewater. Um, let's see what else should I cover there. So basically, COVID is going down, but um, it's because not everybody is vaccinated. So we still have a lot of people who are still vulnerable. Any questions for Mr. Fisker? None here. Okay. All right. And then, um, I was going to ask that, that, that the first time we've been under a million, I think, in a, 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 for, in a while. So it is it is on the on the downtrend, but uh, you know, uh, and just encourage people to be, uh, you know, if they haven't been boosted, um, that uh, they should probably they they should be boosted. It does give you protection, and as you said, the the deaths that we've seen are in people that have. Have not been vaccinated, so the initial vaccines uh, only last. The protection only lasts so long, uh, and uh, so folks should, should uh, if they're due for reboosting, should uh, should get their booster done. So. Plus, the newer booster covers the uh, the more for, uh, the more recent variants. Yeah, the more recent vi um uh, Yes, we do have um um all the vaccines available. There are three three different series in the Pfizer um, for uh, primary series. Uh, second and primary series is divided into two. One that um, five years old and under can take, and another one for uh, six and older. And then the bivalent boost, the bivalent, or the the one that is recommended for booster, and then for Moderna as well. We do have um, okay. all those available. Okay. Okay. So we can move to the next items on the agenda. 
Um, we've covered the bivalent, the covalent, we've covered the low, the viral load. Um, and still, do you have incentives with the cards for those that are, uh, do we, are we still giving out just incentives? Yes. In fact, the, um, with the uh, in, um, gift cards incentives, a lot of people are still coming. It's not consistent, but there are some clinics where uh, people uh, congregate. For instance, most of the clinics that we have with uh, Council on Aging, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of people. I think there is a way, there is a certain mechanisms that um, COVID on I mean, um, Council on Aging uh, utilizes, um, which brings people in. Mm -hmm. Last week, uh, the last clinic that, we, that they had on Friday, they vaccinated 57 people. Yeah, so um, it's, um, I think the cards for, the there are two types, $75 cards uh, from the state. Uh, they're supposed to end at the end of this month. And then the, the CDC cards, which is worth $25 a piece, will supposed to go through um, the end of the fiscal year. Okay. That's been very successful, and it's good to hear that the Council on Aging has been able to to um, encourage people to come and get the vaccine. So that's great to hear. So yes, yes. Also, also, if I may add, uh, there is another group um, under um, um, John Messia at the mayor's office, um, the wellness group. They also vaccinate because uh, Brockton Neighborhood um, Health Center received a grant. Uh, and uh, they have not been able to use all the money. And so they have um, partnered with the city also to bring more people to get vaccinated. So that is going well as well. And they they themselves, those nurses are under wellness trust team, uh, do homebound um, vaccination. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So uh, any questions at all? Okay. None, none here. Okay, next item on the agenda is health promotion and public health education. So, as I said, it sounds like that the community age, community on aging, aging has done a great job. And other partners, uh, any any other issues or new issues or groups that are involved? Yes, we continue to partner with uh, different groups because there is a lot to. Um, address and one of them is mental health it continues to surface it continue it continues to dominate the uh, conversation and so um with uh boston uh, boston medical center bringing into town a new uh service uh and then my interactions with uh dph as uh, uh statewide I mean, a statewide advisory uh, member. I'm able. To, I have been able to reach out to the DMH and the southeastern region uh, office to work together. In fact, last uh, week the um, the southeastern region sent a couple of our members to one of the meetings that we had to um, give us a briefing on what they offer. And uh, if I may add on to that. With the closing of Signature Healthcare Hospital, uh, we have been briefed also on the um, heightened needs for uh, more resources with respect to mental health. And so we participate in the meetings, um, ongoing meetings. There are three meetings um, per week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, as of this past Monday, um, um, uh, February 27, in order to continue to get uh, information about the status of the hospital, but also uh, we learn where the needs are. I think um, many people are showing up at uh, Good Sam Hospital uh, for services, and some people show up just um, to be told that, well, you know, you have a mental health, if there's a mental health issue, then uh, we can admit you. But uh, if um, you're simply coming because um, you want to be uh, seen, uh, then there might not be a bed for you. So 
In other words, what I'm saying is uh, it looks as though many people show up at the hospital for some mental, mental health challenges, but some people, uh, too many, so many people come. And so in the triage, they have to work out to identify mm -hmm. people who have real mental health challenges and needs that needs a bed. Uh, and so that um, really overwhelmed the system there. So we continue to work and see how we can address it. And hopefully we'll be able to um, uh, alleviate uh, and release some pressure uh, or stress uh, from the system. Yeah. No, I, 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 thank you for that on, on the mental health. And I was, you know, as we get into our miscellaneous things, I was going to ask what the impact has been of, of not just on mental health, but you know, other health within the city, uh, with the hot, with uh, uh, signature being closed, and and any idea, you know, we had been told initially a three month time period is uh, our uh, any information that the city has received uh, considering uh, the time, you know, the timeline. Are they still on track? Yes, the time period or and um, and uh, impact that it's had. I, I'm sure at Good Sam and probably at uh, South Shore Hospital and other areas around here. So with capacity issues. Yes, the administration of uh, signature healthcare uh, briefs us on a regular basis, and uh, so far they are on track to continue to meet short-term goals um, within the next three months. And I think they also see the possibility of. Um, extending services to um, medium range goals as well uh, at a much earlier pace uh, than um, uh, previously anticipated. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. One of the things that we we are very um, uh, concerned about also is the um, tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. um, we have many more cases um, being identified by the state and so Board of Health is a little bit more, a um, little busier with those cases because a lot of them uh, are non-compliant. And so therefore uh, they require uh, ongoing visit, uh, as we call it, uh, DOT, um, directed observed um, therapy, so that um, we can make sure that uh, they're taking the meds um, regularly. So that's another issue. Okay. Um, around um, health. So, so the, you are updated uh, continually about the the hospital being opened and, and uh, reopening and, and so forth. Okay, great. Yes, okay. and tomorrow morning will be the next meeting uh, okay. since right. we have one uh, Monday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh, really? Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay. Yes, and the mayor speaks at uh, that meeting. Okay. And uh, miscellaneous items, any other um, items that need to be brought? Mr. Fisk, uh, Dr. Montessor. I haven't got too many. I, I do get a lot of uh, a comment about this natural immunity and also the wearing a mask. A lot of people ask me, you know, <laughs> the Board of Health. Uh, yeah. I, I get that all the time lately. I don't know why, but. <clears throat> well, the... Bobby, there's so much about it on TV lately, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. It seems that um, the immunity uh, over time wanes, and it seems that 10 months seems to be an optimal time how long it lasts, but it's it varies with individuals, and I, Dr. Goofy um, um, may jump in also, but it seems that there is a variation from individual to individuals, because some individuals may, have, may be in better health, and with no pre-existing conditions and um, adhere to the um, vaccination protocol, they get boosted, all that. So you have many, you may have a broader uh, picture of how far uh, people can uh, go with um, the immunity, but um, the average seems to be, the average time seems to be around 10 months or so. Right. Um, the other yeah. aspect with respect to uh, wearing masks, now it's, it's a little bit difficult to get people to wear them, but um, it is recommended to wear a mask, um, you know, if you are in indoor and among people that really you don't know, they're not immediate family members, because that way, um, 
if you come uh, in contact with people who may be infected and asymptomatic, then at least you have some layer of protection. Um, but this is up to the individual. So um, I know when you go to the hospitals, to the health centers, yeah. you still have to wear the mask. Um, I just came from one of the hospitals um, um, where we had a meeting. Um, so everyone in inside the hospital wear the mask, but um, uh, getting people to wear masks indoors is not really something that um, people are um, up to. No, that's correct. I mean, most uh, any any area, patient care area, has to have uh, everyone is fully masked in those areas, and it is individual risk. So there are certain and you know it's moved to sort of the, it's your own personal risk. Being vaccinated does protect you uh, from serious disease. It doesn't protect you from getting COVID. You can still get COVID, but you are protected right. from serious disease uh, uh, that comes with the, and uh, that definitely decreases hospitalizations and and death. Uh, from deaths from COVID. So the vaccines were a game changer in, in doing that. Um, but, you know, it is, in, it, and it's it's also exposure. People in healthcare are exposed continuously. There are certain populations in our healthcare system that don't respond to the vaccines. They are particularly high risk. Um, uh, the, you know, some of our cancer patients and some of our patients with immune problems are, on, are uh, sometimes taking medications that suppress their immune system are at much higher risk, uh, uh, and uh, and um, uh, and their family members. So depending, you know, it's, if you have a family member at home like that, you may be more careful. So, so individuals will, you know, what's been recommended now is it's taking into account your own personal risk when you're outside, and those that you live with, and those that you uh, could potentially uh, expose to the disease. They, you know, there are a, it is still fairly prevalent in the city. We're still uh, the sewer water is telling telling us that. Um, but, uh, but uh, you know, your people are advised to take into account their their own risk moving forward and uh, encouraged to be keep up with their vaccinations. Yeah, I just thought I'd bring that up because I do get a lot of questions about no, that. No, yeah. It, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean this, is a, this is a beard, by the way, it's not a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, outdoors is clearly it's the indoor confined space, sitting for you know the it's usually the prolonged yeah. more than you know fifteen minutes in a area which is not well ventilated and sitting without masks that sort of uh, in people yeah. with people that you don't know or with crowds that uh, makes it a higher risk situation. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other items or discussion points? Um, there was one point that I would like to highlight that has to do with a uh, remote meeting. Okay. Um, I have to follow up with the law department or just um, check with DPH to find out how the new administration uh, will move. But with respect to um, remote meeting, former Governor Baker did pass an executive order to uh, that would last until the end of this month, uh, keeping the meeting uh, remote. But after that, I don't know exactly uh, if we will have a continuation of the same with the new administration. Otherwise, um, next month all meetings may be may resume um, in person. So you'll okay. post it on. The situation. Yes, I certainly will. And um, you may have been contacted by the city uh, councillors uh, for some meeting coming up. They did ask me for your email address. And um, I don't know if you have received any notification from them yet, but I can follow up with you um, offline because um, I think there are some uh, meeting coming up next Monday that uh, you are invited <laughs> um, to attend. Yes, I nothing can. Yet. We haven't received. I haven't received anything. Have you done? No, I have not received anything. Yeah. Okay, I want. I want to maybe check your email also. I'll follow up with you tomorrow because I know that there is one on Monday. I, there are two meetings on next week that I am supposed to attend. Okay. One is on Monday, and I believe that that's the one that uh, they have. Um, um, extended an invitation to you, and then one on Wednesday that I'm supposed to attend. That one, I don't think that um, 
you were um, invited to it, but I'll follow up with you tomorrow to make sure that um, you have everything that you need, uh, because there may be some information that I need to share with you um, coming into the meeting. Great. All right. Any other issues? Okay. None here. Okay, so with that, uh, uh, our next meeting will be on April 6th, 6th uh, and uh, we'll uh, be notified whether we'll be doing this uh, virtually or uh, we'll be meeting. We'll be meeting back in City Hall in our usual uh, room. Uh, mm, yeah, most likely, yes. Okay, all right, great. Okay. Okay, so motion to adjourn? Second. All right. Approved, yes. Approved, yes, and uh, thanks everyone. And we'll uh, meet again next month. Take care. Okay, Thanks. then. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye now.